heat out of his shoulder. Good. 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 Okay, very good, yeah. Wow, that feels great in my neck. Holy crap. Yeah. <laughs> Like it hasn't felt this good in a while. Yeah. Good. Good. <laughs> Restore that neck range of motion. Yeah, that happened during a, a lovely skateboarding accident going downhill. And was there no no curiosity to take an MRI? They weren't really. I uh, well, there was an MRI done a while back, but I don't have access to that anymore. Fifteen years ago, you fall how? Just I uh, going downhill uh, on on a skateboard. Okay. Uh, jumping off and not hitting the grass, my butt just hit straight onto concrete. Okay. Uh, going about like 15, 20 miles per hour. Okay. But it was mostly on the right side. Okay. So I know when you look on the. So you um, don't. There's, it's kind of awful. there's no sharp pain in your lower back. Uh, no, not not this time. Uh, not recently. But you've had sharp pain in the lower back. Yeah, sometimes when I flex, uh, do squats or something like that, mm -hmm. and flex my my butt cheeks. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a heavy sharp pain right here. Um, right over L5 or no, yeah. down in the down yeah in the sacrum. Uh, yeah, it traveled up. Uh, I'm actually able to kind of flex and get this part right here uh -huh. and breaks apart almost feels like cartilage or tissue okay and I'm being able to do that more frequently and it actually helps with uh, blood flow and having things kind of shift and move all right so that's uh, not that's not this no 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 right that's, that's it, the yeah, area. It's something else but yeah it's kind of all into one compression area we gotta get like yeah. there's, there's definitely probably some soft to soft tissue injuries in there we need to we'll probably, go through that yeah. in a second. There there's a little, there's a minimal, the height of this disc is a little bit smaller. That's what they're picking on. So the height of these discs and these, now as we go away from the central ray, so the central ray, the center part of the x-ray is really the only part that's accurate on an x-ray. Whenever, because that makes sense, you're shooting a beam of radiation at you and what hits a bone doesn't get to the film, right? But when you start going higher, do you understand you're getting scattered radiation? So this is what creates, do you understand how we're seeing the bottom of these, of these vertebrae? Mm -hmm. Because essentially, we're not in the central ray of the x-ray. So the only real accurate part of the x-ray is really this center box here. Mm -hmm. Now, that's why they do spot shots. They'll go higher and shoot another x-ray. It's why I like MRIs, because we don't mm -hmm. have to worry about distortion like this. Um, so, but the, the main thing that happens when we have a compressive injury, like you're saying 15 years ago, is actually the disc doesn't get injured. It actually injures the end plate. Now there's no, I don't have any you know, compression fractures. These vertebrae look normal. But what ends up happening is on that end plate, meaning where the disc contacts the bone, that end plate starts to release acid that starts to degrade the disc. It becomes from soft and flexible and hard and crispy, and it starts to thin out. And then these little dark holes here are where the nerves pass through, right? And so that last guy there is a little smaller than it's supposed to be based on the height of that disc. Mm -hmm. And so currently, what, what treatment are they doing for this for you? I mostly... Um just the straight uh, leg raises, physical therapy, uh -huh. uh, mostly core workouts. Okay. Uh, that that area particularly uh, only really gets moved very, via Kegel exercises. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of, uh, it, it's it's weird. Yeah, I because I, I'm also dealing with pelvic floor dysfunction yeah. and spasms. Yeah. So Correct. So all the nerves mm -hmm. that all the nerves that go out of this area control a lot of systems, and mm -hmm. the injury that you had has further, what do you want to say, stress this area, and now any exercises you do can further potentially injure this area. Mm -hmm. My philosophy isn't one of core strengthening in that sense, because my worry is that when you're doing core strengthening, how do I know that we're not further stressing the injured disc in your back? Exactly. How do I know, if you have a cracked tooth in your mouth and we're giving you chewing exercises, well, how do we know that those chewing exercises aren't further cracking the tooth that's injured? We know there's an injured disc in here. Well, and we don't fully know that. I mean, we, we, we see the evidence that the disc is thinner than it's supposed to be. We do really need to get an MRI to see how that disc is doing, right? You're 30? 31. 31. Yeah. You know, the height is definitely minimal, I want to say more reduced than it should be, but we really should get an MRI to see where the disc is, how much liquid the disc has, how much the disc can be extruded out. You know, we can't even see it on x-ray. So we're missing information with this. but. The, the disc is non-regenerable. It can be rehydrated, it can be repositioned, but that injury is permanent. I also have had, it, like that's the other 
uh, pelvic bone. The antalgia is not the problem. That's the result of a problem. Right? Yeah. Your body's going to be shifting. Trying to use muscles incorrect for what it's right. not using. Okay. Your neck is supposed to have a lordosis in it, and your lumbar should have a lordosis in it, and those curves are supposed to allow the weight to be evenly spread. So the care ultimately is about getting your upper neck moving and then restoring the arch to your neck. The we're missing information here because these discs yeah. could be injured and we can't. You can have a swollen disc on x-ray and we can't tell. Um, there is a bone spur right here that's getting, you know, these, the thicker edge of that corner there, it's a little bit more white than it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. See, look, look how white that is, right? And yeah. Look how white that is. So it's, that bone is thickening. Why is it thickening? Probably because it's stressed out, mm -hmm. right? When you, it's like a callus. And the spinal cord is right behind there, and so these bone spurs or disc injuries start to put pressure on the nerves. Dealing with about two inches forward with your head from where it's supposed to be. <laughs> so when the head goes forward, the ribs here elevate, and we can try to manipulate this all day long. If yeah. your head stays forward, we're gonna <laughs> we're lose. We're gonna lose. Mm -hmm. And I don't. Any therapy ultimately isn't going to. How do I? <laughs> How are we going to get your ear hole over your shoulder? In my opinion, the only way this can be done is if your body is here, we have to hold you <laughs> back yeah. for 20 minutes so that your body will want to be in the middle. And that's it. There's no, it's counter stretching, we call it. So um, you said you're a caregiver, your body's forwardly rotated, so you're here. And so when you go back to standing upright, your body doesn't reset back to normal. Mm -hmm. you, you retain some of that forward rotation. So we need to actually, what we call mirror image stretch, loosen your spine, make sure everything's moving first mm -hmm. so we can safely arch you back, hold you there, and then when you come upright, you'll just want to be in the middle and the ribs won't be out of place. They won't just pop out of place. Anything past that to me is just, I call it goofing around. We're, we're not gonna get it. We're, we have to fix the posture. I felt like pressure to start to like pulsate down my leg and then pulsate down the other leg, but all this was happening like through the back. Wow. And, but that happened uh, almost a year ago, a little over a year ago. And, and you were lifting, what were you? Uh, no, I actually, at the time, I was just sitting. Uh -huh. And I just twisted a weird way right. uh, to talk to my, yes. my vet. And all of a sudden I ended up on the floor so for hit, 45 minutes. Right. So. You, hit, you hit a nerve and then yeah. your, your muscles and all that will go into protective mm -hmm. to try to guard that. but. Most likely that's happening, it is happening because one part of your back is doing all the bending and we need to restore the motion to the other parts that are frozen, okay. ultimately due to the posture. Mm -hmm. When your body goes forward, mm -hmm. see this is supposed to be, you understand, soft in here. When your body rounds forward, mm -hmm. then it gets a little tighter. It's all tight, do you understand? So try to relax your middle back. I can't, <laughs> I can't relax my middle back here, but keep feeling, watch. Mm -hmm. Now it's relaxed. Yeah. Do you understand? Because the posture determines the tension. Mm -hmm. Exhale. Deep breath in. One more. Let it go. Exhale. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, ribs are back in now. Oh yeah. <laughs> Deep breath in. Look over the shoulder as best you can. And then exhale for me. It's okay. Here we go. Yeah. Last side for me. Other side. Good, face up, probably good. Yeah, I usually have, always have a tight jaw. The more forward your head goes, the more the jaw goes forward, the more the TMJ gets jammed. Uh, it's gonna get tighter because the jaw's in the wrong position because the head being forward puts the jaw in the wrong position. I got your head. You all right? Oh yeah. Nowadays, pops don't usually hurt me too much, unless if it's in the lower back. Yeah, we don't want to, anybody should be touching your lower neck and lower back. One second. There you go. We're going to leave that lower neck and lower back alone the rest of your life. The parts of your spine that are older than you are need to be left alone. And any exercises that potentially put stress on them, I would try to avoid. Right? So how do I, you don't have the, actually, I got you. You don't have the uh, conscious ability to not utilize an area. It's not how it works. The loosest parts of your spine show up first. The, stif the stiffest parts show up last. So by working on you today, we're going to try to reorder which vertebrae move first 
and then the stretching at the end of the visit will you know, say maintain it, retain it, kind of like a retainer the orthodontist gives people, right? So the teeth don't go right back to being crooked. Mm -hmm. If we just adjust, you know, we're not going to you know, change things permanently. Even that, even that spinal, you know, pump for your neck, you know, I... Oh, I don't use that you anymore. You know, I wouldn't use it, first of all, because it pulls your spine straight, and it's like having a cut on your skin. Do you want to be gaping the wound? <laughs> oh, right? no. You know, so you have, it has the potential to gape any tears that are in the disc, and, you know, maybe as somebody that's, uh, when the discs are, you know, post 60 years old, the discs are all dried up, you can use that to try to you know, rehydrate desiccated discs. But when we have young people in their 20s and 30s, when the discs are really fleshy, we gotta be really careful about further mobilizing and, you know, stretching open wounds. You know, these are newer wounds, fresh wounds in there. We wanna kind of butterfly stitch them, close them, <laughs> and, and learn to bend in another area. Mm. All right, I got you. Ooh, it's crunchy right there. Ooh. Yeah, that's usually the spots that bother me with my shoulder. These are the roots of your neck. So these can only be, uh, this stress can only be alleviated by reducing the forward head posture. That has to be goal number one, getting your ear hole over the center of your shoulder from the side. See, right, that's causing nice tingling down my, the front of my shoulder, down my elbow. Correct. This is called thoracic outlet syndrome. You, these, the rib here is elevated because the head's forward. This channel is all filled with lactic acid, muscles that are tight because of the posture. That lactic acid is irritating the nerve, and then the bones in the neck are out of position. So those three components are pressing on these nerves in your lower neck, upper back. Yeah, okay. You gotta make the arch in your neck. You know, this is where your neck belongs. Sit up for me. Yeah, these types of massages helped me for a long time. They got me back to moving around comfortably. Excellent. Oh. A little sore, but man, it is a good sore. The tree keeps on leaning over, and then the roots come out of the ground. Right? These are the roots of your neck, right? If you think of the neck as like a trunk of a tree. And if the tree leans over, then the roots on the bottom here. My parents had all these big oak trees next to this driveway we grew up. And as the tree leaned over, all the roots <laughs> shifted all the bricks. <laughs> right? So it's like the, what's underneath is what moves all this out of position. I wish I could get to it like this myself, but... Yeah, yeah, it's tough. Even lymphatic, there's a lymph node over here, if you're ever wondering what this is. That's a lymph node. These are, they're, the tightness in your neck creates blockages in the, in the, like the lymphatic drain, drain lines, the sewer pipes essentially. The tension comes from the posture. The cervical tension is from your head being forward, and so we can rub, we can exercise all day long until we get that ear over the shoulder. That's goal number one, you know, reduction of forward head posture. Believe it or not, they're nerdier guys than me. <laughs> They don't even talk to people about symptoms until the ear's over the shoulder, right? It's like, where, your head's forward, of course you have jaw pain. Your head's forward, of course you have sinus issues. Your head's forward, of course you have, you have thoracic outlet syndrome. You know, these are all inevitable problems because the alignment's not correct. And we don't live in a world where there's any alignment specialists. We just have people changing tires, but you know, nobody wants to fix the alignment. Gonna feel so great when these marks go away. Once the once the body you know flushes out all this inflammation that's been trapped in here, and then there's more space for the nerves. The nerves aren't so upset and annoyed. Yeah, the left side of your back is a good half inch higher than the right. When I look at your back, you're relaxed right here, but the I definitely yeah, I definitely feel it. The left side's all elevated, oh. right here, versus this is all low on the right. 
and then all these ribs are kind of blown out of position here. The ideal, ideal alignment is what we're trying to restore here. You're in the wrong alignment, and so with that, all of the ear, all that you're dealing with, along with injuries, you know, injuries took whatever alignment that you were in, and injured certain sections, right? So if you're in a wrong alignment and then you hit a curb, <laughs> right? So where the parts of the spine are doing most of the work are the ones that get injured when you fell, right? Mm -hmm. And they further get injured and that creates more misalignment. It feeds the monster, I call it, but... My yeah, this monster was fed a lot. Right, right. Now we, got, now we got like a Yeti in there. <laughs> exactly. There is no normal crunchy. <laughs> like all this in here that's kind of has a crunchiness to it. It's all needs to be evicted. Breathe, breathe, come on. Really bad over here, but sorry. I know it's, it's real okay. crunchy. Okay, it's not hurting. It's just it just feels ticklish. A little ticklish. Okay, <laughs> all right. that's it. It's just that ticklish feeling. You gotta fight. It doesn't hurt at all. That's the most annoying thing. Is try not to fight a tickle. <laughs> it's like so it's not hurting. Huh? Tickle. <laughs> <laughs> Like someone's trying to put something underneath your arm. <laughs> yeah, this the restriction here makes it so that you're, like I said, this is doing all the motion. And so my, that's my worry with all oh, those exercises is that this part of your back isn't participating. <laughs> it's barely participating right now when I'm asking it to, you know, bend like a piano key. I'm trying to push these piano keys down and, they, and they're stuck, right? So like other piano keys are being overstressed because you don't, you're not utilizing these areas. You need to wake these areas up.
heat out of his shoulder. Ten seconds, come on. Now it's starting to hurt. Okay, alright, 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 alright. Right. A lot in there. Try to pull it out. It felt like it wanted to go, but no, there was gonna, just not there. What happens is the soft tissue, the, the tension's postural, and then the soft tissue is loaded with what we're going to see in a second. There's a lot on that side. Uh, we're going to see it all in a second, but I want to get rid of the reason why it's even there. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of just keep on sweeping, take your shoes out the front door. Does that make sense? Taking your shoes off at the front door will keep it from being tracked in all the time. Mm -hmm. It's There are habits that are happening posturally that are creating the environment for this to continue. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ticklish? Oh, yeah. I even think that part of the tickle is this inflammation in, in, in addition, right? It's not just that you're ticklish, it's that there's something inside that is irritating that's making the nerve endings go haywire. And then as I make your back, I call it cleaner, meaning there's no more marks, and as your posture gets better, I find that a lot of this will go away. It won't be as, I'm not saying it won't be, you know, the cure for all ticklist, but, you know, that some of it's from this inflammation built up in here. It definitely helps. I feel a difference. Yeah. Just got to relax. When he's doing like a glute contraction, he's, there's injury on the side of the sacrum that he's running into.
comes out like in a couple of swipes, it's like, it must be a lot. Wow, it's like really, really dark there, but. Yeah, I'm a whole lower body. Yeah. Kind of like that sometimes. There you go. There you go. Good. I got you. Okay, good. Breathe. I got you. Good. Okay. The little light poem was. Yeah, my dad's worried about it. Well, it could be a tumor. It's like, yeah, coming out. How long do you notice that there? Uh, it's been there about a year. All right, well, hey, I would. It's gone down a little bit. It'll get, it'll start working on it. It's not been there too long. Depends on how encapsulated they get. And the longer they're there, the body envelops them, right? And then. Yeah, I got these right here. The one's like, like right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Actually, I don't see them right now. It might be gone. Surprising. I didn't even know I had the light plumbers or anything like that until. Yeah, this is the restriction. It's unusual to get a gua sha marker usually on the extremities unless there's a lot inside. This is the evidence of what's there inside that's congested. That's insane. Yeah, no, it's all, it's all not normal. It's all dead blood inside, restriction, injury. Yeah, my whole body kind of feels like that, so. Yay. Okay. <laughs> I got you, bud. Breathe in for me. Easy, easy. Good. Good. Good, okay, very good, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, breathe, but I got your back. Good. Okay, good. Okay, You did it. Almost. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Almost popped. <laughs> Arms up for me. So even stretching the knees bent. Um, there you go. Okay. Mm -hmm. To stretch that, to relieve that tension you were feeling here, mm -hmm. you want to be stretching like this, letting your arms just stay there. Get the idea? Mm -hmm. You let your arms, and then you're going to work all these angles. So, like, you know, you have the arms to the side, like but you're going to work all these angles. Eventually, the hands are on the floor, and, the, and they're on the floor easily without any 
tension in your pec. How is this supposed to drop? It's supposed to drop like Correct. three, four? All the way. Yeah, like your elbow should touch the ground. Yep. Your yeah, exactly, exactly. Total time has to be 20 minutes. To enact a, lig a ligament change, we have to stretch the ligaments for about 20 minutes so that when you get up, just like when you got up off that table, mm -hmm. see, you laying face down on my table forced you to be in neutral. Does that make sense? You couldn't be forwardly rotated when you were face down. Now we're going to go a step farther and actually arch you back and then hold you there for 20 minutes and then when you come up you'll be even more upright. And that's when you're going to see large differences in the tension in your back, the jaw, all of that is a consequence of the head being forward, the chest being rounded. The difficulty can be that the nerves in your lower back, so because there's disc injury at L5, all the muscles that are controlled by L5 are going to be going haywire. Does that make sense? They're going to be tight, they're going to be spasmed, they're going to be injured because the nerve is tasering them, right? So treatment of the muscles can be too short-sighted in my opinion. You understand? Because the only reason the muscles are injured is because the nerve's pressured. I want to go back to alleviating the stress on the nerve and then see how that changes you, right? What happens if we just calm down L5, maybe all this tendon tightness, clicking, right? I don't, I don't separate that from the nerve. You have significant injury at L5. Let's do all that we can to reduce that first. Get another part of your back bending, clean your spine, and then it would kind of be like, let's go through a handful of treatments, see how your body responds, and then we could kind of go, okay, we got the, once we master the lumbar roller, then we go to this, you know, the lumbar dental roll, right? If you can do 20 minutes on this and it's a joke, then I start exploring the legs. You understand? Okay. But if this is difficult, mm -hmm. of course you're going to have leg symptoms. It'd be, it, they're like, it goes with the territory. This, this being difficult means your spine isn't in the right position, means the discs are upset, means the nerves are pressured. I don't want it so high that your chin is down. Does that make sense? Yeah, you kind of want it. Not that your head's going to go over it. That makes sense? That. Yeah, your head's going back over the device. You almost but, want, want it to kind of create a C shape. Right. Like I, I don't C. I don't want it as low as it could possibly go in your neck either. I want it kind of middle upper neck. So as high on your neck. It won't even go that far down anyways. Right. I want it as high on your neck as you can, but your head's still going over it, if that makes sense. And I'll take my hand sometimes and I'll press, get your head to sink into it, mm -hmm. and then put your hand back down, and then do 20 minutes. And you just lay down and mold this arch back to your neck. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'd love to come back and do this again for sure. You did great, yeah. yeah. Wow, that feels great in my neck. Holy crap. Yeah. <laughs> no, it'll change your life. I uh, restoring that curve and yeah. it's like a little different looking. Yeah, no, yeah, you almost like a I don't know, it feels different looking at things now. Maybe it's like more blood flow to the head. Yeah, for sure. hundred percent. Yeah. No, it's 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 holding you. We have to hold you back and then your body will want to be in the middle. Good range of motion, man. Yeah. This like hasn't felt this good in a while. Oh yeah. <laughs> Restore that neck range of motion. I have good neck range all ready. I get beautiful. Oh. That didn't feel any pinches or anything. Isn't that so that's great? Good. Yeah. It's all moving as a team. Very good, thank friends. You so much. Very good. Awesome. You did great. Yes. Thank you.